run. Tally had never ridden a hoverboard barefoot before. Young Smokies had all kinds of competitions, carrying weights or riding double, but no one was ever that stupid. She almost fell off on the first turn, zooming down a new path they'd spiked with scrap metal only a few days before. The moment the board banked, her dirty feet skidded across the surface, spinning her halfway around. Her arms flailed wildly, but somehow Tally kept her footing, shooting across the compound and over the rabbit pen. A ragged cheer rose up below as the captives below saw her fly past and realized that someone was making an escape. Tally was too busy staying on board to glance down. Regaining her balance, Tally realized she wasn't wearing crash bracelets. Any fall would be for real. Her toes gripped the board and she vowed to take the next turn more slowly. If the sky had been cloudy this morning, the sun wouldn't have burned off the dew from Croy's board yet. She'd be lying in a crumpled heap in the pen, probably with a broken neck. It was lucky she, like most young Smokies, slept with her belly sensor on. Already the whine of hover cars taking off came from behind. Tally knew only two ways out of the smoke by hoverboard. Instinctively, she headed for the railroad tracks where she worked every day. The valley dropped behind her, and she managed to make the tight turn onto the whitewater stream without falling off. With no knapsack and her heavy crash bracelets missing, Tally felt practically naked. Croy's board wasn't as fast as hers, and it didn't know her style. Riding it was like breaking in new shoes while running for your life. Over the water, spray struck her face, hands, and feet. Tally knelt, grasping the edge of the board with wet hands, flying as low as she dared. Down here, the spray might make it even harder to ride, but the barrier of the trees kept her invisible. She dared to glance backward. No hover cars had appeared yet. As she shot down the winding stream, swerving through the familiar hard turns, Tally thought of all the times she and David and Shay had raced each other to the work site. She wondered where David was. Back in camp, bound and ready to be taken to a city he'd never seen before? Would he have his face filed down and replaced by a pretty mask? His brain turned into whatever mush the authorities decided would be acceptable for a former renegade raised in the wild? She shook her head, forcing the image from her mind. David hadn't been among the captured resistors. If he'd been caught, he definitely would have put up a fight. He must have escaped. The roar of a hover car passed overhead, the shock wave of its passage almost throwing Tally from the board. A few seconds later, she knew it had spotted her, its screaming turn echoing through the forest as it cut back to the river. Shadows passed over Tally, and she glanced up to see two hover cars following her, their blades shimmering as bright as knives in the mid-morning sun. The hover cars could go anywhere, but Tally was limited by her magnetic lifters. She was trapped on the route to the railroad. Tally remembered her first ride out to Dr. Cable's office, the violent agility of the hover car with its cruel pretty driver. In a straight line, they were much faster than any board. Her only advantage was that she knew this path backward and forward. Fortunately, it was hardly a straight line. Tally gripped the board with both hands and jumped from the river to the ridge line. The cars disappeared into the distance, overshooting as she skimmed the iron vein. But Tally was out in the open now, the plains spreading out below her as huge as ever. She noted, fleetingly, that it was a perfect day, not a cloud in the sky. Tally lay almost flat to cut down wind resistance, coaxing every ounce of speed from Croy's board. It didn't look like she'd make to it to the next cover before the two cars had swung around. She wondered how they planned to capture her. Use a stunner? Throw a net? Simply bowl her over with their shockwaves? At this speed and without crash bracelets, anything that knocked Tally off the board would kill her. Maybe that was just fine with them. The scream of their blades came from her right, louder and louder. Just before the sound reached her, Tally dragged herself into a full hover skid, her momentum crashing her down into the board. The two hover cars shot past overhead, missing by a mile, but the wind of their passage spun her around in circles. The board flipped over and then back upright, Tally holding on with both arms as the world spun wildly around her. She regained control and urged it forward again, bringing it back to full speed before the hover cars could turn back around. The specials might be faster, but her hoverboard was more maneuverable. As the next turn drew near, the hover cars were headed straight for her, moving slower now, 
their pilots realizing that at top speed they would overshoot her every time. Let them try to fly below tree level, though. Now riding on her knees, gripping the board with both hands, Tally twisted into the next turn, dropping to skim just above the cracked dirt of the dry creek bed. She heard the whine of the hover cars steadily build. They were tracking her too easily, probably using her body heat to pick her out among the trees, like the minders back home. Tally remembered the little portable heater she'd used to sneak out of the dorm so many times. If only she had it now. Then Tally remembered the caves that David had shown her on the, her first day in the smoke. Under the cold stones of the mountain, her body heat would disappear. She ignored the sounds of her pursuers, shooting down the creek bed and across the spur of ore, then onto the river that led to the railroad. She careened along the water, and the cover bars stayed above tree, the hover cars stayed above tree height, patiently waiting for her to run out of cover. As the turnoff to the railroad approached, Tally increased her speed, skimming the water as fast as she dared. She took the turn at full skid and hurtled down the track. The cars swept away down the river. The specials might have expected her to turn off onto another river, but the sudden appearance of the old railroad track had surprised them. If she could make it to the mountain before the hover cars completed their slow turns, she would be safe. Just in time, Tally remembered the spot where they had pulled up the track for scrap metal and angled her board for a stomach-wrenching movement of free, moment of freefall, soaring over the gap in a high arc. The lifters found metal again, and thirty seconds later she came to a skidding halt at the end of the line. Tally jumped from the hoverboard, turned it around, and gave it a shove back toward the river. Without her crash bracelets to pull it back, the board would drift along the straight line of the railroad until it reached the break, where it would drop to the ground. Hopefully, the specials would think she'd fallen off and start their search back there. Tally crawled up the boulders and into the cave, scrambling back into the darkness. She pulled herself as far as she could go, hoping that the tons of stone overhead would be enough to hide her from the specials. When the tiny aperture of light at the mouth of the cave had shrunk to the size of an eye, Tally dropped to the stone, panting, her hands still shaking from the fight telling herself again and again that she'd made it. But what had she made it to? She had no shoes, no hoverboard, no friends, not even a water purifier or a packet of spag bowl. No home to go back to. Tally was completely alone. I'm so dead, she said aloud. A voice came out of the dark. Tally, is that you?